We've all been there. You're a passenger in a car, a bus, or a plane. The journey is long, maybe hours, but you're not driving, so there's nothing for you to worry about. You nestle your head against your shoulder or a window and fall asleep to the sounds of travel. In what feels like an instant, you wake up to find yourself at the end of your trip. That was easy, right? Great. Now do the same thing on a spaceship from Earth to Mars. Hey folks, welcome to Salt Pepper Wisdom. I'm your guide on this epic adventure. Get ready for jaw-dropping facts, mind-blowing stories, and mind-expanding knowledge that will leave you wanting more. This little ball of fur is Dromisiops gliroides, but we like to call him Monito del Monte. Monito del Monte is Spanish for little monkey of the mountains, an apt name for a critter that lives in the mountainous regions of Patagonia, the southern part of South America. It's not a perfect description though. This animal is not a monkey, he's a marsupial. The monkey comparison might have something to do with Monito's tail. It's partially prehensile, which means it can help him grasp things, much like a monkey's tail. They have opposable thumbs too. That extra bit of grip helps the Monito del Monte live and move in thickets of South American mountain bamboo in the Valdivian temperate rainforests. The monito is nocturnal and primarily an insectivore, eating the insects, larvae and pupae that they can find in trees. During the summer months, the monito will supplement their diet with fruit. The monito del monte is often called a living fossil because it's the only surviving member of the order Microbiotheria. All other members of the order are extinct and all we have left of them is fossil evidence. Usually, when you think of marsupials, you think of Australian animals like the kangaroo, the koala and the wombat. There are a few outliers though, like the North American opossum. Like other marsupials, the female monitos have a pouch on the front of their body where they carry their young for a while after birth. When the babies are ready to leave the pouch, their mother cares for them in a nest. Monitos make their nests from water-resistant leaves and use moss to insulate and conceal them. The babies will stay with their mother for some time after they are weaned, and the mother carries them on her back. Can you imagine carrying four toddlers at once? That's one strong Monito Mama. When the weather gets cold and food gets scarce, the Monito de Monte employs an adaptation that has captured the attention of biologists. They get together in a nest with a few friends and go to sleep. For most of the day, the monitos remain in a state of torpor, keeping their metabolism, internal temperature and other bodily functions very, very low. This isn't completely unique to the monitos. There are other animals that enter a torpor state during hibernation. But the monito del monte takes this adaptation about as far as a mammal can go while staying alive. During torpor, the monito only takes a breath about once every three minutes. The heart rate slows way down from around 200 beats per minute to only two or three. Blood actually ceases to circulate throughout the body. The monito is able to conserve about 95% of its energy during torpor. By slowing their metabolism to a near stop, they burn way fewer calories. They don't need to waste time and energy foraging for food that might not be available. Instead, they subsist on deposits of fat that build in the base of their tails prior to hibernation. The most amazing part? When the weather warms up, the monito returns to its normal level of activity, like nothing ever happened. After being in a death-like state for weeks, their hardy little bodies emerge undamaged, inside and out. Before we find out what any of this has to do with space travel, we at Salt Pepper Wisdom want to say thank you for watching. If you learned something new today, hit the like button and subscribe for more frequent fun facts. Let's shift gears. Earth's moon is about 384,400 kilometers away, on average. In terms of light years, that's only 1.3 light seconds. We don't have the capacity to travel at light speed yet, so it takes humans a little longer to get there. The Apollo missions generally made it to the moon in a little over three days. That doesn't sound so bad, right? A few days there, a few days back, and you've had a good space vacation. So what about Mars? The distance between Earth and Mars depends on the orbits of the two planets. They move at different speeds around the Sun on different sized orbital paths. 
Mars missions have to wait for windows of opportunity when Mars is close to the Sun while Earth is far away from it. The closest distance recorded so far was 56 million kilometers in August of 2003. During these launch windows, modern spacecrafts can make the journey in as few as 150 days to as many as 300 days, and the windows occur every two Earth years. This creates a lot of challenges that are going to need solutions before we can safely send people to Mars. The infrequent launch windows would make it difficult, if not impossible, to send supply missions to the astronauts or to bring them home quickly in case of emergency. We would need to find ways to pack enough food, water, fuel and other supplies for years and preserve them for as long as possible. There are so many factors to consider. The minimum amounts you would need, the maximum amounts you could afford to bring, the shelf life of perishable items and whether you can produce enough energy during the journey to keep it all going. One extra consideration of space travel is the effects of radiation. Without Earth's atmosphere to shield them, astronauts and their supplies are exposed to greater amounts of radiation than the people on solid ground. Solar and interplanetary radiation would be a constant concern throughout the journey, as would surface radiation during a stay on Mars. The risk of cancers and brain-related diseases would be, well, high. Scientists have observed other health problems in people who have spent a long time on the International Space Station. There's muscle and bone density loss from the zero gravity, loss of eyesight, genetic changes, and long-term issues with cardiovascular and circulation systems. Being in space is really hard on the body. It's hard on the mind too. Humans don't do very well in isolation for long periods of time. A Mars mission would mean a handful of people have to spend months or even years with each other in a confined space. Cabin fever, anyone? Astronauts have also been observed to experience increased anxiety, depression and insomnia. Psychological health is important both for the individual astronaut and the crew as a whole. Every person on a mission has a job to do. and They need to be able to perform under pressure and work together no matter what obstacles come their way. The ISS is close enough to Earth to bring people home or send help in an emergency. Once you're on the way to Mars, there's no turning back. This is where our friend the Monito del Monte comes in. Their torpor state allows them to sleep through unfavorable conditions for an extended period of time without damage to their bodies. If humans could find a way to do something similar, we could sleep our way to Mars, conserving energy and resources while minimizing the toll on our bodies and minds. It would also save money and reduce the size of spacecrafts. Hibernation during space travel would solve so many problems, we can't stop thinking about it. Science fiction has played with the idea for decades, putting characters in suspended animation or a cryogenic freeze in order to put them in the far corners of the galaxy. There's another problem though, we don't really know how the Monito does it. From the outside, the triggers for torpor and hibernation seem obvious. The weather gets cold, nights get longer, food becomes scarce, and so the hibernating animals start sleeping. But what are the physiological mechanics at work? How does the body know when to start and stop torpor? How are monitos able to maintain it without sustaining damage? One piece of the puzzle may be a substance called hibernation induction trigger, or HIT, found in the blood of animals that hibernate. It functions like an opiate, and scientists have been able to induce hibernation in animals by giving it to them at different times of year. There have even been studies that suggest HIT can be used to prolong the lives of organs used in transplants and may aid the organ's recovery after a transplant procedure. If we want to learn more from the Monito del Monte, we have to protect them. The Monito's habitat is limited to begin with, including only Chile and a little bit of Argentina, and it continues to shrink due to urbanization. Building highways, hydroelectric complexes and tourism developments have caused the Monito population to decrease in recent years. They are not an endangered species at the moment, instead classified as near-threatened, but we need to be careful how we use the land where they live. Monito del Monte is the only animal that spreads the seeds of the mistletoe plant in Patagonia's temperate forests, and dozens of other animals and birds rely on mistletoe fruit, nectar and nesting materials. That's a lot of responsibility on their small, marsupial shoulders. There's a lot we still don't know about the human metabolism, and the study of creatures like the Monito help us learn more about ourselves and about the world. It just goes to show you that we're all interconnected on this planet we call home. And maybe 
with the help of the little mountain monkeys, someday we'll have another planet to call home to. Wake me up when we get there. Hey, thanks again for tuning in to Salt Pepper Wisdom. Leave us a like and comment below to tell us what year you think we'll get humans to Mars or beyond our solar system. We hope you'll subscribe and hit that bell button so our next exciting video finds you as soon as it lands. See you next time. Goodbye for now and love to all the Earthlings. Spread kindness, spread wisdom and be safe.